She's absolutely hilarious. You love her. She did stand up when the wheel was invented. Please welcome Patty Ross Brown. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm here tonight because they wanted a whiny cunt and Brian McCarthy wasn't available. And she sticks the way. <laughs> Speaking of whiny cunts, Gino Biscotti is here. Gino! Gino, are you growing a beard or did some skank sit on your face and leave a residue? You're a hot mess, Gino. I mean, a grown ass man, six roommates, and you sleep on a futon for fuck's sake. How are you getting hot girls to bang you? I guess you're, what you lack in money and success, you make up for in roofies. I'm kidding, Gino. I don't think you're a rapist. You'd have to be sober enough to have a heart on to be a rapist. Yeah. So good. So good. Yes. No. She's doing better than that. <laughs> so good. So good. Speaking of people who would definitely get ass fucked in prison, Tom Cassidy is here. Yes. I have no jokes for him because nobody gives a fuck. All right. Jim Norton was here, also known as Chip Chipperson. Different character, same cock breath. Chip is a weird, fucked up guy played by an even weirder, more fucked up guy. It's like a Russian nesting doll of sociopaths. Chip Chipperson has his own podcast and did a successful comedy tour. Did you hear that, Tom Cassidy? There are fake people with better careers than you. Aaron Berg's got those big muscles, but you're out of proportion. He buys his jackets at the big men's store and his pants at Baby Gap. <laughs> I want to say that every fucking show. dick when he was 12 years old. He says that doesn't make him gay because it was a long time ago. <laughs> Come on, Aaron. There's no statute of limitations on cocksucking. It's not like pedophilia where after a few years, all accusations are dropped. Am I right, Anthony Cumia? <laughs> Anthony Cumia, Epstein, R. Kelly. Hide your daughters. <laughs> Gino and Aaron have a podcast together, and wow, what a team. Aaron works out every day, and Gino blacks out every night. Gino, you drunk motherfucker. What? <laughs> One time, Gina went down on Karen Feehan, and two hours later, she queefed and blew a .08 on a breathalyzer. <laughs> Gino's liver is so black and hard, once it fucked Chad Zumach's mom. <laughs> protest. <laughs> Speaking of black, Keith Robinson is in the audience, which surprised me because honestly, I thought he was already dead. <laughs> Keith, so wait, you weren't the one hit by the Walmart truck? <laughs> oh, stop. Fuck you all. Okay. I'm sure Keith is here for the slutty white women. Well, you're in luck, Keith. We have Christina Hutchinson and Corinne Fisher, or as their moms like to call them, the cum guzzlers. <laughs> if you love their podcast, guys, we fuck, check out their new podcast, Undiagnosed Lesions on Our Rectums. <laughs> Progress after a century, but fight.
fighting for women's rights. We're finally at a place where two whores can do a podcast about getting fisted by a Puerto Rican busboy in a Chipotle men's room. Thank you. <laughs> Girls, your baloney flaps have been so blown out and beaten up, they look like Barry Ribb's face. <laughs> It's Barry motherfucking ribs. You look like Bernie Sanders' father. <laughs> and he's been dead since 1962. So funny. <laughs> Thank you. This is going to be a long roast, so would somebody please keep an eye on Barry? If you see him slump down and stop moving, please, please don't say anything until you're completely sure he's dead. <laughs> Barry, you've been trying to make it for decades. When do you say, maybe it's not going to happen? <laughs> when do you say, maybe I should quit and find another career? Seriously, Chad Zumach, when do you say that? <laughs> Chad and Barry, the chances of either of you making it is like the punctuation in a Mike Bichetti tweet. Non-existent. <laughs> The, the lovable Mike Bichetti. Mike is a 58-year-old man who looks like a 68-year-old lesbian. <laughs> Mike, you have the weirdest shaped head I've ever seen. It looks like it should be sticking out of the dirt on Easter Island. <laughs> Mike's lost a ton of weight. He went from being completely unfuckable to being completely unfuckable in smaller pants. <laughs> Since we're talking about people no one would ever voluntarily fuck, let's get to the man of the hour, Neil Brennan's brother. Woo! <laughs> to some people, Kevin is known as Neil's less talented brother, and those people are his wife and kids. <laughs> Kevin is one of 10 children. Neil was the runt of the litter and Kevin was the cunt of the litter. <laughs> it's weird with you and Neil, somehow you both look like the other one if he had AIDS. That's <laughs> terrible, that's bad. Actually, Kevin and Neil have a lot in common. They both lick brown ass. <laughs> You know, normally roasts are to celebrate someone who's done something extraordinary, like Dan Soder sucking off the right HBO executive to get a special. Oh. Or Barry Ribbs staying awake past 9 p.m. <laughs> but we're doing this roast because you're such a douchebag, it's almost given you a career. Almost, all right. Uh, your biggest claim to fame is having been, been attacked by Gary Goldman. How much of an annoying asshole do you have to be to drive a Jew to physical violence? <laughs> Hitler, Goebbels, Mengele, none of them ever had a Jew take a swing at them. And not just a swing, he choked you. Where did Gary learn how to put you in a chokehold? He must have watched that Kumia video <laughs> with that girl. <laughs> It wasn't Kumia's fault. She just couldn't remember her safe word. 911. Okay. <laughs> Kevin, you sound a little gay. Not suck a cock gay, more like giving Mateo Lane a hand job under the table at a Buffalo Wild Wings gay. All right. Uh, here we go. All joking aside, Kevin, we're here tonight to honor you because you say the things we don't have the nerve to say. You've got big balls. Yes, yes, thank you, yes. Yes, yes. L little, little, little teeny dick. Teeny weeny little dick. But big balls, seriously. His dick is microscopic. Kevin, you should just cut the fucking thing off because the scab would be bigger. You've heard the joke, his dick is so small, he could fuck a Cheerio without breaking it. Well, Kevin can fuck a Cheerio in its ass without breaking it. <laughs> Wait a minute, one more. 
But really, who needs a big dick when you can make a career out of being an enormous dick? There's an old saying, nice guys finish last. Kevin is proof an asshole can finish last too. God bless Kevin Brennan, and God bless...